little song I wrote for my mom, Martha's Kitchen. Like a honky tonk peanut player. And uh, I was walking out of her kitchen. You had to go through the kitchen to get to the back door. And I had my guitar in my hand. I was 14 years old. Where are you going, boy? I said, I'm going to Nashville. And I ain't coming back. And she is always cooking. She says, all right, don't be late for supper. <laughs> and uh, years later, I wrote that song for her called it Martha's Kitchen. It's, it's the finger pick. This was inspired, of course, by Chet Atkins, but also a lot of it is Merle Travis. Merle Travis, uh, I had opportunity to meet him. In fact, I have a, a tape of he and I playing together. And the guy that, uh, that taped it was uh, Grandpa Jones in 1976 at his house there in Goodlettsville, Tennessee. I'll never forget that day. And Merle Travis spent a whole afternoon with me, pretty much the whole day with me, just playing. And, and uh, now you have to understand, Merle Travis was my hero. I mean, he was one of my all-time heroes in life and still is. Merle Travis uh, was one of the founding fathers of this of this style of playing and he learned from a guy named Mose Rager a couple of guys and Ike Everly and of course all this goes back to Muhlenberg County in Kentucky there's more history to it but just to talk about Merle a little bit uh, Merle uh, played with an index finger and his thumb like this and his and I cannot do that I, I, I'm not fast enough I have to use two fingers A lot of his sound, of course, it came from just the index finger, too, but a lot of his sound was from that thumb, you know, and the way he... And he was a blump, blump, blump. Sort of like... And he'd throw little licks, like little clashing notes. Now, the, the difference between uh, him and Chet, where his bass was like this, and, and you mute that with this part of your hand. So it's like you're playing like rhythm guitar when you're playing the Chet Atkins type thing, like you're doing this, and you reduce, you reduce it down to this, and then you mute it like this. So you have your one, five, one, five, one, then the afterbeat, there's my dad would say that afterbeat. And, uh, when you change to uh, like a G, it goes from a 5 4 to a 6 4. So 6 4, 5 4, 6 4, 5 4. And they would always use a lower bass. Seemed like Chet and Merle both would do this. Instead, on an E, or you could do it here. But Chet liked to run things together. Like just sort of cascade together, you know, and everything just runs together. Merle Travis. Chet Atkins. They'd have these little licks like that between the two of them. I mean, it's a lifetime right there. <laughs> and it's, it's a little roll. And like I say, I don't pull down. I, down, I pull up on my, on my pull-offs. And you can just get hung up right there. 
<laughs> and it's those little riffs and that bass line and everything. That's what made them who they were. Uh, I was so thrilled last year to be inducted into the National Thumb Pickers Hall of Fame in Muhlenberg County, where Merle Travis started. And also, of course, Chet Atkins is in that. Jerry Reed is in that. Tom Bresch, Dr. John Knowles, Steve Warner, Tommy Emanuel. There's some really great players out there, folks. And, uh, and we all get it from somebody else. It all comes from someone else. And uh, so those were some of my influences. And just wanted to show you a little bit of the difference between Chet and Merle. And so experiment for yourselves and have fun with it. And the way I learned that and the way I could learn to do that was from a sailor named Barry Lackey. Maybe someday we'll get into that lesson, too, that I, the way I learned to play. But until then, God bless you guys. Have fun picking.